I'm going to drink a sip real quick. My throat got caught up, sorry. Now you know how it is filming, like, for my own show. I'm just like, oh, man, good thing I can cut this. My name is Nick. Go by Nicky MG TV on the, the internet. Um, I am uh, from Maryland, so that's where I grew up at. Essentially, Maryland, Pax River area, if anyone's familiar with that. There's a naval air station there that I, I grew up near. Um, and, yeah, that's what, what else? Oh, rank. You said E6. <laughs> or I, I, I'm an E6. Yeah, I, I'm like, you said E6. No. Uh, I'm an E6, uh, HM1 in the Navy. I currently am an independent duty corpsman, and so a lot of people don't know what that is if you're, you're a civilian. The best thing I can equate it to is like being a physician assistant in the civilian world. Like I'm able to treat, diagnose, do x-rays, do physical exams. Like I act like a doctor when there isn't a doctor is the best way to explain it. And uh, obviously my scope is dependent depending on where I'm at when it comes down to like Am I on a ship by myself in the middle of the ocean? There's no doctor there. I get to do a lot more. Whereas if I'm in a clinic, I'm kind of you know reduced back uh, to doing a lot less. But I do have a lot of capabilities there. But my original MOS is hospital corpsman, but we specialize from that. I went to pharmacy tech because my family said get as much free education as possible. It wasn't a good move actually. That was not a fun. I was good at the job, but not not what I wanted to do for the Navy. So then I got to this job here. So, I have been in now 13 and a half years. I joined out of Hope Mills, North Carolina. My dad, or my stepdad at the time, had gotten a job with BE Systems down in North Carolina, which made me move down after high school because I had no plans over to live. So, eventually I was like, oh, I guess I got to do something. I was working at Barnes & Nobles uh, at the base area there. And then after that, like... We ended up having a falling out. I moved back to Maryland and I shipped out of actually Pax Rivers uh, recruiting station versus actually the Hope Mills one I actually signed my contract at. So kind of interesting story. I'm one of those people that I didn't understand the military was around me until after the fact. Um, because my stepdad, he was prior Marine Corps at the time. Uh, he was some kind of aviation. I think he was like a structural mechanic of some kind, some kind of like an AM equivalent. Um, then my grandfather, knew he was in the Navy, never talked about it. Um, my grandfather from my mom's side, Air Force, never met the guy. So, I mean, I have a lineage of military in my family, but I didn't ever correlate that because no one ever talked to me about it. My first duty station, I'll kind of start from the top because I know people don't count boot camp, cool boot camp, A school was over there. Then while I was in A school, they were like, hey, if you get a certain GPA, you can end up going to a C school. At that point, I ended up going to Portsmouth, Virginia to be a pharmacy tech. I went there and then I had always dreamed as a kid from Maryland of a skateboarder. I was like, I need to go to the Mecca of skateboarding. And the only place you can go is San Diego. I joined the Navy partially because San Diego, I knew, was on one of the duty station lists. And I was like, that's where I want to end up. And I remember they were like, okay, well, if you want to go to San Diego, like, put that on your dream sheet. So it popped up. I ended up over there. Uh, and then I was there for four years, did a little stunt for a tour with the USNS Mercy um, for like a little deployment humanitarian type thing. Um, and then I went to Rota, Spain next. I know everyone's going to be jealous about that. Did that for three years. Went back to San Diego for training for a year and a half for the job I do now. And then I got orders here to Japan. So this is where I'm at. And uh, I'm about to get out of here soon too. So I'll say this, I think my favorite duty station has been probably Rota, I would say, because I traveled so much. We went to like 20 countries while I was there. I was able to travel every three, four days we had off. So that's why I enjoyed that. Um, and I 
would say that was like my my backpacking tour. I was not so focused on being in the Navy, I'll say that. Uh, my least favorite was the San Diego tour. And as much as I loved San Diego and what to do around there, uh, my biggest issues were my work. I was constantly busy just working in the pharmacy there, which is like a, being in a factory. Like it, it was the most civilian job I could have ever had <laughs> as my first duty station, so yeah. Um, so my mentors that have been in the military have really been for kind of non-traditional purposes. Um, and it's been for people that go off the beaten path. And, you know, I, I almost don't like the word mentor because I think we, we get something from everybody. But uh, I would say one person that really rubbed off on me was uh, Senior Chief Josh Beard. A uh, good dude, one of our instructors that I just kind of resonated with and I could tell he thought non-traditionally about the service and what mattered and I aligned with some of those values and seeing uh, what was important. I think he embodied that. So uh, I think it's okay to kind of do things your own way and not always follow this arbitrary path that somehow everyone thinks we need to take to succeed or make the next rank. So I am actually about to re-enlist. <laughs> call, call me crazy or convince me not to. Um, essentially, yes, I'm gonna do my 20 years. So if anyone's watched my content and this is like an exclusive for your channel, I've never talked about this because I feel like it's not about me anymore. Kind of like what we were talking about, like your channel isn't about you. Um, I was going to go off officer and commission that route and I dropped the package. I'd done it. wasn't accepted the first time, but as YouTube has blown up, that has become my passion. And there's, they always say like, once something is your passion, you don't work another day in your life. The, I a hundred percent agree with that. You just have to find it and try stuff. And I tried this. I'm halfway decent at it and I like doing it. So that's why. So I've never tried to make this a full-time job. It grew in its own right, in its own organic way. So when I first started, watch JT Suits, he had like five or 6,000 subs, right? And I'm seeing him do all these podcasts with veterans. I'm like, man, this guy's doing a really good thing um, about talking about the military and helping people because I felt like even for me, I'm going to date myself saying this. But I was on Yahoo Ask back in the day, asking questions about the military, reading forms, trying to understand what I was getting into. And that was 2008. And I'm seeing this guy still in 2007, or sorry, 2017, getting people knowledge about the military. I'm like, there is a gap here. And I realized in 2017, I was hitting eight years at that point. And I was like, I have a lot of experience. I'm not the most experienced, but I am experienced enough to, to help somebody coming through um, and kind of be that middleman that's no bias to being a recruiter. And I'm also not the new guy or the old guy that was your uncle that was in 20 years ago. So I can kind of talk and you realize what incentive does Nikki have to tell me this information? Maybe to get views, but you know, I look at it and I tell people, if you want views, don't talk to 1% of the nation. That's the truth. Uh, because if you want views, I would go to a bigger audience. But that's not why I started the channel initially at all. A lot of people ask, how are you able to do YouTube? How is this the, the case that you're able to make and be able to make this a side gig? And I'm like, I don't do it in uniform. I'm not breaking UCMJ. I'm not doing any of that. I've talked to legal. I've... You know, done these things to make sure that I am in the the guidelines, and it's it's a very black and white. But you know, pe people wonder how I'm able to do this, and I'm like, I also cite sources if I'm covering some information. Um, and usually, if I'm covering that someone is seen unfavorably, I could be like, well, this is what these people here are saying. This is not what I'm reflecting, and I I think a lot of people respected that because they're like you're trying to actually report 
And sometimes you feel like you're being told a certain story that you want to be told a certain way. And so I, I try and stay as central as possible, but that, that's difficult. Sometimes uh, I will go a little more right or to the left or, you know, wherever I'm trying to hit. That's funny because people don't realize when something's your passion, you're going to give every ounce of your time or energy to that. So for me, making the videos is the passion. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, what's the new episode of this or that? Or what, you know, video game are you playing? And I'm like, I'm not playing any video games. The only thing I want to do is make a video. I am literally sitting there almost at least every other night, probably sitting down, writing a script, uh, you know, producing it, editing, filming, all that stuff, making thumbnails. And people are always like, well, couldn't you outsource it? And you could, but for me, I just really enjoy the process of making a video. And that's kind of hard um, because I'm having to eventually need to give that up at some point. I got to figure out how to do that. Uh, I have always wanted to pick the brain of Admiral McRaven, um, the Navy SEAL officer. He was in charge of all the Navy SEALs at one point, um, and he was known for that famous speech about making your bed every day. And I would like to talk to him, and my other person would be Captain Crozer, uh, the one that was relieved off the Theodore Roosevelt. I don't think I will be able to, based on the political atmosphere around that maybe for for several years but uh yeah that's those are the two people i'd like to have on so uh as far as content goes i'm still going to continue doing news i think as i progress forward i would like to do news beyond the military i mean that's something that I think I'm good at, I've said I'm good at, but I think I could definitely cover other aspects that are thought provoking or critical thinking and looking at uh, the way the world is through uh, my lens, I guess, of what I'm seeing and, and kind of pose good questions and, you know, give a thought provoking uh, perspective. Oh, <laughs> um, they, my juniors probably say, I, what do I say all the time? Probably, I don't know if you've seen, I made a video about this, but, and then I will interject with, because a lot of stuff I talk about on the channel makes it into the video, like into the video, but also my personal life. And, you know, I think my channel right now encapsulates a lot of, like, just what we would naturally do anyway is talk shop, you know, and, and kind of bounce off ideas and bounce off, you know, what's happening in the service because it is a living, breathing organization that, whether we like to believe it or not, has changed. And, uh, you know, it, there's a reason why everyone says back in my day. <laughs> See, I know you know Oh, this is the cold pressed bricks. Here we are, Donnie's company here. I feel bad about your your uh, your audio setup here. If you want to go through there, and pick whichever one. Call them. Here, we'll do uh, blueberry fields. That's for you, Donnie. Blueberry fields. Look at it. Right there. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. It means a lot, man. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think uh, those are typically reserved for someone that is either dancing in uniform or something of that context. Uh, I don't dance, and I don't do anything really in uniform, so I don't think I'll make it, to be honest. Oh, this is a can of worms, man. This is a can of worms for me. Do I... I'm going to switch my 
Do I hate that they use a uniform? No, because I understand. It provides a message very simply, very quickly. I'm in the military, I have some experience, and this is what I'm doing, right? So I can kind of speak from that perspective. And in the, the world of social media, everyone's based on credibility and clout and things like that. And so it provides a very quick snapshot of credibility. So I understand why it's used. But what I have really loved is people, when they watch my channel, I am Nikki. I'm not the guy that's wearing the uniform. I'm not the guy that's being known as HM1 so-and-so. And people, you know, as they dig through, they'll probably see that. But that is not what I present first. I present, I'm a person and come at you at a humanistic level. And I think that's how I lead as well. And I always tell people, if you're leading from your rank, you're already leading from the wrong place. So that's my mindset. I love that you asked me this question. I max out my TSP every year now. Um, CNS fun, let's go. Um, that's where I'm at. A lot of people are overwhelmed by it and I love the TSP because it's almost like the dummy's guide to being a millionaire in my opinion. Um, and I'm like, you have your military retirement if you're an old guy like that's gonna get the high three, right? But I tell people, I'm like, you're gonna get that. That's a guarantee plus some kind of disability on top of that, you're working another job. Get risky with this money so it can grow. It's shown it's grown. Um, and, and just do not stop. And I always have my junior people that are not appropriately, uh, on my risk level, not appropriately um, where they should be. And I kind of just, I don't ever push them to move their money anywhere, but I show them my results. I'm like, this is what I've done. Read, these are the different types of funds. I'll show you, historically speaking, you've lost this much money by keeping it in the G fund. And they're like, oh, and the light goes off and they're like, I need to move this money somewhere else now. And I'm like, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to help you out. And I've, I've had a couple people that have taken, you know, my non-financial advice and, you know, move their stuff and they've been very happy. Again, I just it's all risk tolerance and what you're willing to do. But yeah, I, I do max out my TSP. I mean, my junior guys, I, I get it that it's overwhelming. They're just trying to balance addition and subtraction in their checking account. That is, if we can get past the addition subtraction of you not blowing your money on booze or whatever the newest PlayStation game is, you know, we can get you in a better position. Um, and so I tell a lot of my guys, I'm like, Get me to where you have zero debt, 36 months of expenses. I will make you a lot better than where you thought you would be, you know, leaving the military. And so a lot of people don't understand. It's not rocket science, but you're, you're going to relearn TSP probably 10 times before you find they're like, I can teach this to someone else, right? Like that's my thought process. I would say this, to end an interview is the idea that the interview could be continued. And that's what I'd say. Because literally, I don't think this is the first time we're gonna cross paths. I think it should be more. I think it should be more than once. So again, stay tuned for the next time because it's gonna be a next time. And you're gonna subscribe for next time. Right? Yeah, I appreciate it. I say that works out, yeah.